sticks out, yeah? Um, maybe your jacket has got um, a certain Reasons. line. Mm. Have you not seen some jackets where you see the iron stain on it, the iron mark on it? Yeah. Because and it, it's shining. Yes, and it's shining. Um, for, or trousers oh, that no. have got three gaiters. Mm. That, oh, <laughs> and no man likes to wear trousers that has got double gaiters on it, right? And sometimes, you know, you try and iron as much as possible. You still get the double gaiters if you're not careful. So sometimes steaming, which dry cleaners do, mm -hmm. is better than putting a hot iron on your outfit. Mm. So the condition Suppose is important. Suppose you own a steamer. Yeah, yes. But then it's still not going to keep the outfit clean, though. No, right. <laughs> but it'll remove but, the creases. But, yeah. Oh, yes, everybody should have one kind of steamer. Only mm. the other day I found one cute little steamer that you can travel with, actually. Even better than an iron. So a steamer does well. And there are some outfits that really and truly speaking, you really can't put an iron on it because it becomes cumbersome to iron. Then the condition and the cloth itself. Now, there are times when, um, like I said before, sometimes you have your ghillie, mm. which is white, mm. okay? Being white, with we women, makeup stains white very easily. Yeah. And because it's white, um, unfortunately, it's difficult to wear again unless it's clean. So sometimes you want to, because of certain material mm -hmm. like this, hardly would you put a ghillie inside water and soap. Mm -hmm. you're, gonna, you're gonna ruin it, for sure. So sometimes my white ghillies like this, I would definitely take it to the dry cleaners. Then for men with ties, I must say, sometimes you, if you're somebody who always ties your ties down for, you know, easy accessibility and, you know, easy to wear, you wear that tie, you might wear that tie so many times without realizing that actually it is now dirty. Many times, I don't know, have you put a tie in water to wash? Well, I had to learn how to both dry clean and launder a tie because right. they're depending on the fabric. Yes. The, you can you can you yeah. can destroy it. So for example, silk yeah. ties, for silk instance, ties I would not advise you put cleans. their best dry cleans. Yeah. Yes. And most times, most men wear ties without realizing that the sweat on the neck has actually settled on the tie, and you mm. might not notice it. So ties, things like gillies, no, the kind of cloth. On the knot. Yes, on the knot, and you can mm. see it. You can actually see <laughs> it, but they wear it again without noticing. They might not notice, but when and somebody over sees time, them, mm. it gets stained. It will. It will get stained. It will. So things like that, the cloth itself, silk ties, gillies and things like that, that are very delicate. I think they definitely need to be dry cleaned, you know. Um, at the same time, um, color control is also important. Sometimes you see the outfit, you don't really know that it's going to remove color until you actually put it in water, all right? So I think that is very, very essential. And then, of course, let me not forget perfume stains. Perfume stains are something that you have to be very careful with, especially if you're wearing white. And sometimes you've already put the perfume on it, you've gone out, the sun has dried on that outfit, and then the stains begin Didn't we learn that you should actually put perfume on your skin and not on your clothes? Yeah, well, it depends. Antiperspirant is better on your body. Perfume is also better on your clothing. But if you want your perfume to last longer, the moment you come out of the shower and your pores are still open, if you put perfume directly on your skin, you will smell that fragrance all day. It may burn too. <laughs> <laughs> because your pores are still open. I actually, it won't. <laughs> you know, um, and of course, definitely, sometimes for durability, dry cleaning is better. The more you put something inside water, the weaker the fabric becomes, you know. Oh. I'm still going to talk about the protocol and etiquette of dry cleaning in a moment. <laughs> so, but anyway, I want to say that, um, another thing too. Sometimes you're putting on your makeup and your foundation actually stains your outfit. Mm -hmm. If you try to use soap and water to wash it, mm -hmm. it's going to get bigger. And imagine foundation on your outfit. Okay. It's going to get even worse. So I'd say if, you've made, if makeup has actually touched any of your outfits, don't even bother to put water at all. Dry cleaned. If you can, just get it dry cleaned. The chemical will pull it out. Okay. You know? Yes. So, okay. So when it comes to protocol of dry cleaning, first of all, choose what outfits that you want to dry clean. Okay. Not everything. All you right. know? We'll, we'll take a moment and we'll come back so okay. that you do that closing moments. Please don't go away. Okay, good. Welcome back. Closing moments with Janet.
Okay, so what's the protocol and etiquette of dry cleaning? First of all, identify which outfit you want to dry clean. Don't just throw anything there. Mm -hmm. You're going to waste your money, of course, okay? Um, look at the specific areas where there are stains. And if there are stains, try and make sure you notify the dry cleaners that this is where a stain is. Look for any areas that could be torn at all, because if you don't notice it, then you may blame the dry cleaners for tearing your outfit, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I think you must make sure, because this happens all the time, empty out your pockets. Take out everything that's personal, because sometimes you take off your outfit and you forget you've got money and things inside your pocket. Take everything out of your pockets immediately. Some outfits, like our dresses, have belts. I would suggest take the belt off. If it's not a fabric belt, if it's a normal belt, take the belt off. Keep the belt aside, because sometimes they tend to mix up people's belts and mm -hmm. it gets lost in transit, okay? Separate your office wear from your casual wear from your traditional wear, even when they're all going to the dry cleaners. So this is a bag full of office wear. This is a bag full of traditional wear. Make sure that your tops and bottoms are together. For if, if it's a suit, for instance, the jacket and the trouser should be together. The blouse and the wrapper should be together. Many times you assume they're together and you tend to forget, okay? Um, be clear on the instructions. If you want starch, tell them. If you don't want starch, also tell them. You know, if, it w if you want it on a hanger, tell them. If you want it folded, tell them. It's important because it's an assumption that they're going to do it the way you want them to do it. Um, please count your clothes before they go to the dry cleaners. If possible, write it down. Okay? Count your clothes. I, I can't say that enough. Okay? Outfits do get missing. Um, make sure you collect a detailed receipt. Don't just collect a receipt that says six outfits. Mm -hmm. Collect a detailed receipt. Go through the receipt once you have received it so that you align with both of you on the same page with the outfits that you have. Make sure you take into consideration the collection date, try as much as possible to pick up your clothes. Too many clothes are being abandoned in dry cleaners. And you go back six months later and you're expecting to see your outfit and then you cause a whole lot of trouble because you've abandoned your outfit. I know dry cleaners have bundles of people's clothing that they can't even, yeah, that have not been collected. All right, and finally, I'm gonna say, um, how do you choose your dry cleaner? Choose one that is reputable. Choose one that delivers the outfits on time. If they say Wednesday, Wednesday is Wednesday. Choose one, um, look at the corporate policy when it comes to outfits being damaged or outfits being lost. What is their corporate policy? Mm -hmm. Do they pay you back a certain percentage or what happens? Because some of them would just say, sorry, it's not our fault and that's the end. You know, it's happened before. Um, if anything the is, um, yes, mm, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> that's mm. the end, you know. Yes. Um, I'd also say that make sure that... Um, you pick small pieces at a time. I mean, take, take a laundry, uh, a dry cleaning service that will, give, that will make sure that once you give them five pieces, ten pieces, they can do the job for you. Okay. Because what happens is that they will tell you, oh, it's not ready, it's not ready, it's not ready. You want to, um, a, a dry cleaner that has integrity. Right, that, for their word. And Thank then you, I have Janet. to say, finally, I would say, <laughs> make sure that the dry cleaners are ones that actually take care of your clothes very well. Um, some of them will come back and say, well, I couldn't get that stain out. I couldn't get that stain out. They should be able to tell you that this stain is removable or this stain is not. So by their word, integrity again. And I think Etiquette even at home, look Janet, at your, <laughs> look at your clothes. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much, Janet. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. That was etiquette coach Janet Adichu, just returned from her <laughs> holiday. That's why she's so talkative this morning. <laughs> yes, we'll be right back with the home stretch in just a moment. <laughs>